In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Become merciful. Become merciful. Is that statement law or is it gospel? I'll give you a grammatical hint. It's imperative. It is a command. Therefore, it belongs to the law. So also, judge not, condemn not, forgive, give. All are in the imperative voice. It's the Lord's command for you, the sort of Christian instruction that many ask for. Not merciful? Well, then you better change. Judgmental, condemning, stop it. Unforgiving? Better start now. Neglecting your neighbor and your congregation? Give? Well, you better shape up and loosen those fingers. And there you go. Now you have something to work on this week. Get your act together. And if you don't, all your failures will come back to haunt you. Keep up your unmerciful, judgmental, damning, and unforgiving, miserly behavior. And Jesus says today, don't be surprised when others behave the same way towards you. And worse than that, fail to live up to the highest standard, that is to keep this command in every way and in every detail, and you'll fall under judgment. You'll have damned yourself to an eternity of hellfire. And so people would like to hear a sermon preached. We actually have a name for that, don't we? Preaching hellfire and brimstone. My friends, this is not Christian preaching. And too often, it's what passes for it. Because you actually don't need Jesus or the Bible to tell you to be merciful and colorblind and forgiving and generous. You already know that, even without the Bible, that that's how you should live and that's how your hearts should be oriented. Because your heart has already told you the same thing that all of the wise instructors of all time have thought. The Buddha, Confucius, and all the rest of the pantheon of pagan and religious gurus. They all say the same message, the so-called golden rule. Improve, work at it, and you'll attain enlightenment. Give you something that you need to work on, to strive for, and is good and as loving as that might be for your neighbor, Christians, that is not faithful preaching. That's because it is the preaching of God's law alone. God's law is useful. God's law is edifying. God's law shows you how you should or ought to live. Because it's should or ought to, you know, the law always brings you under accusation. It always disturbs your conscience. It brings into doubt how loving or faithful you thought you were. Maybe even the law might even bring you to doubt whether you are children of God. And that's because these imperative words, these do words, judge not, condemn not, forgive, give, be merciful, they do not and they cannot give you the power to accomplish them. They make demands but actually don't come with the power to accomplish. That's because God does not give you these laws to show you what you can do but actually, as St. Paul reminds us, to show us what we absolutely cannot do. The law increases trespasses. It reveals sin. 
So God does have the Christian preacher preach the law. And by this, the Father is showing you, forcing you to look at your life with consciences informed by his word. He does this so that you will confess and be honest, as you already have been today. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God is showing you by his law the log that is in your eye, bringing you to confess that you have no ability, no power to remove it. The law reveals to you a great need and then reveals to you the remedy and the answer. You're so utterly blinded by your own sin that you can't see it. And you need your eyes opened by a good surgeon, physician. Blind men can't lead blind men or we'd all just fall into the pit. You are blind, but the Father comes today with healing for your sake and for your neighbor's sake. So what then is missing from far too much Christian preaching? What's the good news? What's the gospel that must be pre preached to you today from this pulpit and into your ears to be saved? You are not merciful, that's true. But your Father is merciful. That's good news. You are judgmental. But you will not be judged by God eternally. More good news. Yes, you forget and abandon your neighbor. And yet your Father does not forget you or abandon you. More good news. You refuse to re forgive, and yet your Father never stops forgiving you in the blood of his Son, Jesus. Sweet news. You don't give to your neighbor or to this congregation the kind of support that you should. And yet the Father never stops giving you everything that you need for your body and life. Sweet, good news. Why would your father do everything for you when you do absolutely nothing for him? That you don't deserve a lick of it. And that's a good question. For God to act towards you precisely the opposite of what you deserve, what kind of God does that give you? But a crazy, even unjust God. And it seems the same. Why would he give commands that you can't possibly keep and then not hold you to account? for your disobedience. What kind of father doesn't reward his children for good behavior and at the same time punish his children for their poor behavior? It makes no sense to us. From the heart and center hmm, of sinful man, and yet from the heart given in baptism from Christ himself, it makes complete sense. God has not gone against his word giving commands that you cannot keep. Your sin is justly punished. The law is perfectly obeyed. All and every ounce of God's wrath is suffered, and your death sentence is carried out. But the good news, the absolutely best news that you could possibly ever hear, the only news that you actually need to hear, is that everything, the wages, the penalty, the justice, and the wrath of God the Father that you deserve was justly meted out, but not upon you, but upon his son, Jesus, in your place. Your father is merciful because he gave his son to willingly suffer for your sin. Your father judges not because Christ was judged guilty by Pontius Pilate in your place. You are not damned because Christ suffered all the wrath and damnation of the Father upon the cross of Calvary. You are forgiven by the Father because Christ the Lamb, his Son, shed his blood to atone for you. And you will not suffer death and hell, 
because you are given life and salvation through Jesus. Be merciful, judge not, condemn not, forgive, give, is fulfilled in Jesus Christ for you. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That everything that the Father requires of you, that he commands of you imperatively, he gives you in Christ Jesus. And he gives to you, it to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over into your lap. Your sins are completely atoned for as they have been washed in the blood of Christ in baptism. Your every sin is buried and forgotten in the solid declaration of absolution. Today your confidence is renewed, your hope strengthened, your comfort restored in the body and blood of Jesus Christ shed for you, for you Christians to eat and to drink. Everything that the Lord demands of you, he gives to you in his Son. Your Father is merciful. He is absolving. He is redeeming. He is forgiving. And he is giving in Jesus. So I know what you're thinking. What next? If everything is given to me, what about those commands? What about those imperatives that you said I couldn't possibly do? You who are in Christ Jesus... You who are baptized in his name and given his Holy Spirit, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. The forgiveness you abundantly receive from Jesus today overflows in your forgiveness of one another. You who have been given mercy, show mercy to others. You have been declared not guilty and set free in Jesus. Withhold judgment and condemnation from others. Your Heavenly Father has been abundantly generous towards you, and you are generous with the poor, the needy, and your brothers and sisters here. Remember the word given by St. Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. For the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And this is how the Father gives what he demands. He gives to you this good news, this gospel, his son, Jesus. Live in Christ Jesus, receive his mercy, trust in his forgiveness, in his holy name. Amen.